Hi, students. Uh, I get asked a lot about internships. It's one of the things I get asked about the most by, uh, by students. Um, they wonder if they need to take an internship. Is it required? Um, is it a good idea? Uh, how do they go about doing it? Can I help them get one set up? And uh, hopefully this video is gonna answer all of those particular questions. So right off the bat in our anthropology major, it is not required for you to do an internship, but you may wish to do one. Uh, and we have set it up so that you can do an internship and receive official credit towards the major as the class anthropology uh, 495. Um, the answer to the question, should you do an internship is a little more complex. In general, I highly encourage students who are interested in doing internships to pursue doing an internship because they offer a really great practical hands-on experience doing a skill or set of skills directly related to your course of study in anthropology. Uh, that said, not everybody will want to do that uh, particular kind of experience, especially if you're not uh, sure if you're going to go on in a field that's directly out of anthropology, like in museum studies or archaeology or something like that. If you're, if you're planning to sort of move into a different sector, but, you know, obviously leveraging your anthropological training, then an internship in a museum or uh, at the archaeological center or something like that may not be, you know, directly, you may not be learning skills that you're going to directly apply. That said, you might still learn some really useful general skills. I mean, you have to get along with people. You have to work in a setting and uh, complete tasks on time. And, and whether or not you um, are going to employ the skills directly in, in whatever line of work you end up in, you can learn some of those sort of basic job skills and potentially secure a nice letter of reference from your internship provider that's sort of in addition or, uh, you know, set next to the letters that you might get from professors who only know you in an educational context. So they can be really useful experiences for all of those reasons. So if you're interested in pursuing an internship, the next question that you probably have in your mind is how do I go about finding one and how do I go about obtaining it, getting it set up, earning credit for it, and completing it in a satisfactory manner. So firstly, how do you go about finding your internship? Well, in a normal non-pandemic year, uh, I would be your first point of contact about that. I curate a list of internships that I have set up generally beforehand. These are with internship providers that we have been working with for a long time. And we've had many students go through these internships and they've had positive experiences and I've sort of pre-vetted them and set up all the necessary university paperwork so that you can just inquire directly with the internship provider about the opportunity to do an internship with them. And once you get the go-ahead from the internship provider, it's just a simple matter of filling out a few internal pieces of paperwork. I'm going to provide links to these. Um, you have to get signatures of the internship supervisor, the person who you're going to be working with. You have to find a faculty supervisor, a faculty mentor who's going to oversee the academic part of the internship course, which includes asking you potentially to do a little write-up or keep a journal or something like that, and who will be assigning your grade at the end of the term. And then finally, you need my signature as the undergraduate advisor to just make sure all the uh, T's are crossed and the I's are dotted and uh, that everything's good. And then in a non-pandemic year, you would turn this into the anthropology front office, but in this year, I'll, I'll manage to do that for you. Um, the only other piece of paperwork you might need is that if the internship is going to take place out, off campus, you would need to fill out the sort of standard um, release of liability for off-campus activities form, pretty straightforward. And again, that needs to be filed in, you know, with us in, in the front office of anthropology. Um, and if you were going to do it this year while we're working remotely, I would deal with that for you. Now, uh, if you want to do an internship that is not from the list of pre-approved or pre-vetted opportunities, um, we can make that work for you, but it requires me to do um, a bunch of paperwork that needs some lead time, at least a couple of weeks of lead time for me to be able to do the paperwork. So I need to issue what's called an internship site questionnaire that goes to your potential internship supervisor and organization. They need to fill that out. 
send it back. It needs to go up to multiple levels at the university to be approved. Then we have to develop a, a service learning agreement and everybody has to sign it, including this internship um, provider. And then we can start filling in the other pieces of paper, the actually internal and 495 paperwork that we just talked about before. So that can take a lot of lead time. And if you come to me in the first week of classes, there's a chance that it's gonna to take too long before the drop deadline for everything to get set up and you won't be able to register for the class in time. So you need to come to me before the semester. Um, like, so for example, if you wanna do it in spring, come to me towards the end of the fall semester, which means you have to be looking you know, a lot earlier than you might uh, if you were just gonna take one of the sort of pre-approved opportunities. And even if you do one of the pre-approved opportunities, you need to work before the semester starts to uh, broach the topic with the internship provider and make sure they have an opportunity, make sure they have a slot available um, because there's no guarantees. Um, just because we prearranged the um, possibility of doing an internship with these places doesn't mean that they actually do have internships available. So um, just keep that all in your mind. So how do you then go about doing the work? How do you earn credit? Um, what, what does it show up for on your transcript, et cetera? So the ANTH 495 class that you register for, again, you have to have a faculty supervisor who is gonna give you the actual schedule number so you can add it to your schedule. And the reason being is that each individual faculty member has their own set of schedule codes assigned to them for their own internship. Uh, that they oversee. And uh, faculty are not obligated to over, you know, um, mentor or oversee your internship. So you're gonna wanna approach a faculty member that you feel comfortable with. Um, and they're gonna wanna see some evidence of what you're doing. Every faculty member is gonna ask you to do something different. Some will ask you to keep a journal. Some will ask you to write up a description of what you did at the end. Some will just wanna have a series of meetings with you throughout the semester just to check in and make sure everything's going fine. Um, Others are even more hands off. They just want to talk to you briefly at the end. You know, it's up to the individual faculty member how they're going to judge whether or not you're getting educational content out of your internship. You're generally going to arrange with your internship site supervisor about what the activities are that you're going to do and what your schedule is going to be. Now, how many hours do you have to intern and how much credit are you going to get? So ANTH 495 is unique in that it is a variable unit course. You can take it for one, two, or three units. You can only take a maximum of three units, but you could split these up over multiple semesters. So you could do one internship for one unit in one semester and a second internship or, or continue the internship into the next semester and do it for two units. So for every unit that you earn, you should be working three hours per week at the internship site. Um, and that means that if you're gonna do all three units in one semester, you're going to be working nine hours per week. You arrange with your internship site supervisor how that schedule is gonna work. Are you gonna do it all in one day? Are you going to spread it out over multiple days? Are you gonna bank a bunch of hours at the beginning of the semester uh, or before the semester starts? You can always do stuff like that with them, but you have to work it out with them. Some of them prefer you to come in um, on a weekend day or something like that. Some of them have minimum hours that are greater than that. So for example, the San Diego Archaeological Center usually asks that you commit to 10 hours per week, um, no matter how much credit that you're actually earning for it. So you should keep that in your mind um, when you agree to do the internship. And you need to keep those hours regular and you need to treat it like a job so you don't just not show up, you know, you, if you get sick or whatever, you should let them know and tell them not to expect you, et cetera. Of course, all of those things can be worked out. Um, when you complete the semester, you have to work with your professor supervisor, your faculty supervisor, uh, to make sure that the grade is registered so that you do everything. Um, they may ask to see logs of your work just to make sure you did everything. They may wanna contact the supervisor of the internship um, you know, it's up to the professor how detailed they want to get, but the grade that you get is actually a credit, no credit grade. So it's not a letter grade, which is a nice flexible way to help you focus on actually doing the work in the internship and not worry about what grade you're going to get out of it. So as long as you complete all your hours and you do whatever the faculty supervisor wants you to do in terms of write up um, or discussion about it, 
you're generally going to get a credit for it. And ANT 495 is great because it counts as methods if you need methods. So uh, a lot of students find it a useful way to finish meeting their methods requirement um, while also getting that off-campus or additional hands-on experience uh, that helps them get sort of better prepared for their career. Now, if you've completed your methods requirement, then it's going to count as an elective, just as a regular elective. And it's neat because it'll help you get uh, towards finishing your major. It, it's not going to detriment you, generally speaking, uh, in terms of your GPA because it's credit, no credit. Uh, and it potentially can help satisfy things like the, like the um, methods requirement as well. Um, I'll note here in the end that if you can find an opportunity, an internship opportunity that is related to anthropology and paid, that's also okay. Most of the internships, including all the ones I usually prearrange, are not going to be paid. So you just have to put that into your mind. You're going to have to commit to that amount of time working, you know, in your schedule, and likely you won't be getting paid for that. So unless you can find one of those internships. And students occasionally find these internships. So I have a student this semester right now who's uh, interning um, with a marketing agency and they're paying them. Um, and what I'll say is that depending on the internship provider and et cetera, sometimes, not all the time, certainly, and it's not a guarantee, but sometimes these things do parlay into employed uh, work after the internship is complete. So that's also another kind of perk or benefit of potentially doing the internship. So I'm gonna provide a series of links about the uh, internship paperwork and uh, description of the process, et cetera, written up in text for you. Um, but hopefully that's answered some of your main questions about internships. And if you are thinking of doing one this next semester during the pandemic, just be aware that all the internships are going to have to be remote internships, meaning you're not going to be allowed to go to any physical place to do internships. They have to be telework, you know, telecommuting, computer-based stuff, something of that nature. So that's going to complicate the game a little bit uh, for the next semester at least, and maybe, maybe afterwards for a little bit. Um, but it's still possible to arrange something um, if you can think a little bit outside of the box. Alrighty, so hopefully that answers your questions and you're all kind of keen and uh, eager to do some interning going forward.